So move it over to the midpoint. Can you find some space between it? Can you keep doing that for eternity? Between any two points, there's, there's a gap. In that gap, you can fill it in with another point. Because points have no breadth. That means that even though we draw them on the board like this, they really don't have any distance between them. So two points can get, would you agree, infinitesimally close to each other? That means so, so close that you can't put anything between them, but there's still so <coughs> little distance. And then you can get even closer to that, and closer to that, and closer to that. Would you agree that, to that? So here's the idea behind calculus. It says we can get Q so close to P that there's literally no difference between the secant and the tangent. We can get it so close, we can't let it equal, but we can get it so close that the secant line is the same as the tangent line. That's the idea of a limit. Isn't that kind of an interesting idea? Yes, there are different points, but they're so close, it doesn't matter. That's the whole idea. So, the, the big picture for our limits is, if we let Q get really, really, really close to P, the secant will be identical to a tangent. That's the idea. Or approximate it so closely that it doesn't matter. If we let Q get really, really, really close to P, I'll use a better word to express I'll use a more mathy <laughs> word for that in just a minute. Really, really close to P, the secant will be identical to the tangent. Here's the idea, right? Here, here's, here's the idea. Now, I replace this really, really, really with, uh, with a key phrase for you. The idea of really, 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 the idea of moving P or Q really, really, really close to P is called a limit. Moving something really, really close without actually getting there. That's the idea of a limit. You kind of understand the idea of a limit? We would say that Q would be in a limiting position. That means we, we've got it all the way, really, as close as we can to P, but it never touches P. That's the idea of a limit. It gets really, really close. So the idea of really, really close is a limit. In the most simple terms, this is it. Like to see an example of how to actually do this? Yes. Would that be interesting to you? How to find the slope of curve at a point? You want to see that? It's kind of fun. Okay, we're going to work through this. Um, I'm, I'm simply doing this to give you an understanding of how limits work and the jump that you can make, okay? Uh, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of math like this. I'm just giving you an introduction right now so that you see it's possible with some real math stuff that you've had before without actually teaching you limits and calculus. I'm going to make one limit jump in this problem. I'll show you what it is. Uh, but this is stuff that you could actually do. We're just, going to, we're just going to use calculus to do it better. You ready for it? Do it more mathematically. Before I go any further, did you guys understand the tangent problem? Not sure if you're okay with the tangent problem. You understand the idea of a limit? Moving a point really close to, but never actually getting there. Again, why can't we get there? Two points. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay, cool. Now we're ready. I'm excited. First little step off into Captain's land. Do you trust me? <laughs> you shouldn't. Here's the goal to this problem. I want us to find the equation of the tangent line to this curve at a certain point. It's 
specifically that one. One one. Well, let's go over to one one, and let's put a point there. So p is the point one one. <coughs> I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna do this right now. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna make up a tangent line using this idea. Are you ready for it? Over here on this idea, we had two points, right? P set in stone, you're not going to move P. What other point do we have? Q. We're going to make a point Q. Q. What's the coordinates for point Q? Why don't you tell me? It's coordinates for point Q. Two. <laughs> we can't use actual numbers, right? That wouldn't, that wouldn't be very good. So I, I, I know 2, 4 would be on there, and 3, 9 <coughs> would be on there, 4, 16, and so on. But I want you to use actual points. In general, what are the points for, or what are the coordinates for any point? X, Y. X, Y. Very good. Okay, X, Y. So now write down X, Y and have your eraser handy. Have your eraser handy because I'm not going to have X, Y. I want to keep this in terms of one variable. Now, using your, your, your knowledge of what the function is, what's the function? Y equals what? Wait, say it again. Y equals what? X squared. Y equals? So instead of having x comma y, would it be okay with you if I had x comma x squared? Yeah. Yes, no? Because y is x squared, right? So that wouldn't matter. So erase that, and I want you to put x squared. Cool. All right. All right. Now we have this secant line going from P to Q. P is a fixed point, 1, 1. Q is a movable point, x, comma, x squared. Would you agree that any point on this line will have the coordinates x, comma, x squared? No matter what I plug in, right? So that, that movable point, that's going to have the same coordinates all the way down. Now we have this secant line. Here's what we want to know. We know that the equation for a line is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, true? What we're trying to find is the equation for a tangent line. Here's what the equation for a tangent line would be. Pay close attention. It would be y minus y1, that's the same, equals the slope, but a specific slope. It would be the slope of the tangent line, true? Whatever the tangent line slope happens to be. So the slope of the tangent line and then x minus x1. Now, the cool part about this, I'll, I'll recap this in just a bit. The cool part about this is we already have a point. What's my fixed point that I have? One, one. I already have 1, 1. So really what this comes down to is can you find the slope of the tangent? That's why I said finding the slope of a curve at a point is the big deal for calculus. You already have the point. That's the easy part. The slope is the hard part. So we're going to try to find right now the slope of the tangent. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Are you sure? We're going to use the idea of slope of a secant. So we're going to take a break right now. We're going to come back to this uh, in, in case you're just a little bit lost. Here's what we've done so far. This is y squared I gave it to you. We've fixed one point according to my problem. That's 1, 1. We've made up another point, a movable point, q. q is at x comma x squared. Where did the x squared come from? That's because it's y. All right, great. We now know that the equation of a line is this, so therefore the equation of a tangent line would be the same exact equation. It's just we have the slope of the tangent line. The problem is it's very hard to find the slope of a tangent line without doing the limiting idea. You can't do it because there's only one point there. So we're going to have to use the idea of a secant and make it into a tangent line by moving Q really close to P. Do you get the idea? Basically doing that with this problem. So let's take a look at the slope of a secant. our specific secant. Hey, by the way, do you remember the slope in general, the slope formula? Slope is what over what? Right. Okay, great. In terms of our coordinates, slope is? Delta y over delta x. Specifically, in terms of our coordinates, what is our slope? That's what I'm looking for. y2 minus y1, yeah, over x2 minus x1, otherwise you get the, the negatives of that slope. So y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Do you follow? How many people feel okay with this so far? Just slope formula. What we're going to do, we're now going to find the slope of our secant. We've got the secant on the board, right? The secant will be the slope 
I'm sorry, the slope of the secant will be the slope from points P to Q. Agree? Let's plug in these coordinates. We only have them on the board. Plug in these coordinates into that formula. In our case, our Y2 is what? Our Y2 would be X squared. What's our Y1? X1. Not X. One. One. Would be 1. What's our X2? What's our X1? One. Okay. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Not sure if you're okay with that. So what we'd have for the slope of our secant is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Are you okay with this so far? Find out where the slope comes from. There's a couple notes I want to make at this point. First, I'm reiterating a lot of stuff here. I know that I am. I'm doing it on purpose because these are the key points of calculus. All right, You need to understand what we're doing. I would hate for you to get through this class right, and at the end of it know how to take derivatives and integrals and have no idea what you're doing. You can be successful on just doing derivatives and integrals in this classroom. But if you don't understand what it is you're actually doing with those things, you don't even know what they are right now. But if you don't understand what you're doing, it's irrelevant. You're just now just doing formulas. It sucks. If you know what it comes from, what you're actually doing, I, I'm going to make sure you know, by the way, it's a little bit more interesting and you can apply it to more things. Do you get the picture? So right here, what we're doing, step number one, is if we move Q close to P, this is going to become this. Do you agree? As P, I'm sorry, as Q, I'm going to use a new symbol here, approaches P. That means as Q gets really close to P without touching, the slope of the secant line approaches the slope of the tangent line. Would you agree with that statement? That's over here right now. You, you agreed with it already. Haha, <laughs> I tricked you. Uh, as Q gets close to P, the secant gets close to the tangent. True? That's, that's what this says right now, okay? As Q gets close to P, the secant gets close to the tangent. How close? It depends on how close we get these things. If we get them so close it doesn't matter, then these become so close it doesn't matter. Agree? It's kind of neat, right? It's a cool idea. Now, the, the problem is, here's, here's note number one. Here's note number two. <laughs> this is interesting, right? Where are we trying to find the slope? What point? 1-1. One, one. One, one. Well, and what's the x coordinate for 1-1? One, one? To find the slope of anywhere, you, you plug in that value, right? This gives you the slope of the secant line, true? Plug in 1. Plug in 1. What happens? No, you don't get 0. You get 0 over... Zero over zero is not zero. That's a big problem. Zero over zero, zero over zero is undefined, right? Isn't that an issue? This is why, folks, this is the reason why, why you cannot have the point getting, listen, you can't get Q close to P because if you plug in one, it's undefined. That means that you're, you, you have the same point. So you can't let X equals one, that's big time. 